Okay. Hi, my name is Ellie. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about some of the multichromes in my collection. I had big dramatic plans for how I was going to do my videos about multichromes. I was going to do like um like a quest for multichrome, trying several different formulas and figuring out my favorite ones and my favorite way to apply them. And I had, as you have heard in multiple videos by now, editing issues. So I've had some of these for a while. I've had other of them short amount of time. So I'm just going to do a quick overview of what I have, maybe do some swatches, and some of the things I have noticed. No, I'm not wearing any multichromes today because I didn't really plan this. Um, I might do some multichrome looks later this week. Let me know if you have a preference, if one of these uh, colors or formulas is one you want to see me work with, let me know. Uh, they're not my first choice for doing a tutorial or like getting ready with me uh, type video because the way I use them is very straightforward. The most interesting thing I really did with them was that one where I attempted to do uh, one as a liner. But generally when I'm wearing these, I'm packing them over, um, just all over the lid, uh, either over a primer, a glitter glue, a cream shadow, uh, and normally the, the crease is either one of the shades in the multi-chrome or a brown. I'm not doing anything super elaborate with them, like some people who are mixing them with a mixing medium and doing like really, really interesting, elaborate, uh, drawn on like graphic liner. I don't have those skills. And I mainly wanted to see where I was at them with how they wear. But let's just get into it. I've got some single pots. I've got three from Dawn Eyes Cosmetics. I've got Heavenly, uh, which seems to be one of the more approachable ones. It's kind of like gold and orange and green. It's very traditional colors. It would be pretty easy for most people to wear, as well as scintillating, which is kind of like mauve to mint. Uh, if you like blue-green pigments or like deep mauves, reddish browns with a flash of green, you're probably going to like this one. It's very, very soft approachable, whereas this one's a bit more aggressive. This is fantastical, which has a really strong purple flash. It also has uh, red and green in it as well. So these are all in shaker pots. They are loose multichromes, which makes them a little bit more complicated to play with. I also have two from Terra Moon Cosmetics. I have more on the way. These are their multichrome flakes. So I have Wisteria and Control Freak. As you can see, Wisteria is blue, purple, pinky red. Uh, Control Freak is more green, gold, I think it's there's a little bit of blue, yeah, a little bit of navy blue at the edges, uh, and these are very, let me open one up and show you, these are loose, but they're very textured, these are big, chunky flakes, ooh, that one's loose, and then I have my pressed ones, which is, well, these are a lot, so, when I originally placed my order, I had the full Kleena Cosmetics Glitter Multichrome collection. They have added more since then, so I do not have the full one anymore. Um, I have the hybrid multichromes down here. This is one of the regular jeweled multichromes. And then I have a rainbow assortment of the jeweled multichromes over here. So this is all Kleena Cosmetics. And then I have five from Davina Cosmetics, also pressed into pans. This is just a regular duochrome I have uh, from Terra Moon Cosmetics, which part of this is that it's hard to touch them and move them around because if you end up filling up a whole area with them, if I want to know what the name of one of these is, I have to take it out because I didn't remember and I'm not going to likely remember like which of these four pinks is which. They're pretty close in tone. If I didn't memorize it when I put them down, I don't remember it. So that's what I have. I have the most experience working with the glitter multichromes. Um, I've kind of swatched and played with the hybrid multichromes, but I have not like really done a serious wear test with them. 
have worn a couple of two. I've worn two because I, I pulled them aside when I used them. I've worn two of the jeweled multi-chromes for like a full day look and the Davina ones I've pulled in here and there and I have some opinions. I've worn these a couple times but as a loose one they're just harder to work with than I was expecting. I don't have a lot of history working with loose shadows at least in a way that was super easy for me. Uh, and I have worn this loose flake. I have the most opinions about the glitter multichromes because I've worn most if not all of them. I was I was really close. I had kind of let's get this back up which makes me very nervous to hold it up that I'm gonna drop it or dig a finger into one because these are gorgeous and very pigmented and expensive. So multi-chrome pigments in general are expensive. I do have some pressed multi-chromes that are not as textured coming from Terra Moon, but I don't know when they're going to get here with everything going on and the backlog of everything being shipped because so many places are closed. It'll get here when it gets here and we'll play with them then. For the glitter multi-chromes, I had kind of done most of them. Um, I had left some of the more easy to wear ones, like the deeper mid-toned gold to green shifty ones. I'd kind of left aside for later because I was trying to wear these more pastel brighter ones on the weekends. I had had so much footage. <laughs> Originally my plan was to film a swatch, film the pan, like shifting my camera around it to catch the different colors in it, and film like a check-in on how I wore it for that for that look. And then, you know, I don't have any good way to edit those together and I didn't get all of them. But I have found my preference with a lot of the glitter multichromes. I think those are the ones I'm going to want to use this spring a lot. My, my spring need is for pastels, and a lot of the glitter multichromes are pastels, and they do really well. Um, just kind of picked up with the finger and packed all over the eye. They, they adhere to a regular primer pretty well. They, they apply with a brush pretty well. But you just get, in my opinion, which is unfortunate because I don't like using my fingers, the best, most impactful look of the Glitter Multichromes, just packing it over whatever you've got with your finger. It smooths it into this really nice sheen. Um, it gives that full reflective, wet type of look and really allows the, you know, all the different colors in it to really pop. My plan to use most of them, since they are a lot of them are lighter in color, is to pull out some of the different pastel mattes I have, kind of do a pastel matte crease, pack that over the eye, and have a big, like, pastel duochrome light look. They're going to be harder to wear, they're going to be less approachable for a lot of people, but in order to fully catch that shift, if you want some of the lighter ones, that's the way I like to use them, the way I've been using them. I wore a couple of them um, all over my eyes for my uh, going out birthday party shenanigans, which really wasn't that much. But I would suggest if you're not super comfortable with brights and pastels to get one of the more mid-toned ones like Grisale is really, really, really pretty. We will swatch it. If I do, I have some stuff. Like, it's really, really pretty all over the lid. It's a, a type of color shifting that is something people have been using and are pretty comfortable with. Uh, if you want to get a little... Oh, no, I did it. I did it. Oh, no, that's in the wrong pan. Um, torch, if you want a little something more, a little something brighter. Torch has that flash of pink that really is something a bit more impactful, whereas this one's pretty, but it's not going to draw as much attention as something like Torch. Um, well, it's, it's just, it's so nerve-wracking for me to try and pick these up and not bang them into things. I also think foiling is a good 
place to start if you're not as full on with the pastels. And again, picking up with your finger is the best, best application I've seen so far. And it does the most, in my opinion, to get that very metallic shift. You just kind of pat it and swipe it. They adhere really well. Torch is gorgeous. I really don't know how to show. Again, I'm not good at showing that, but you can see the green and the gold and the bronze. These are really approachable shades. If you wanted one or two pops, um, I would suggest... Do, 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 do. These... Everything is hard to touch. Uh, something like glazed being such a nice... Oh, I, I took way too much out of that. Being a pinky purple gold type shift. Um, very easy to work into a look as you know, like the inner half of a something with a taupey gray, I don't know, lid shade. I should stop swatching. That's what I should do. Uh, you could also probably get away with ripple in a look as like the main thing on a lid into like a navy blue or a darker green with something less aggressive in the crease. You could also, if you're very into bright reflective. CL is very good as like an inner third type look. Oh, stresses me out trying to get these back in without gouging chunks out of them, but also like they're very, very pigmented, very, very emollient. They apply really opaquely. Um, if you are worried about the black base that comes in the jeweled tones from Clayna Cosmetics, the glitters do not have that. The glitters are full glitter, glitter, glitter. That said, they are glitter. There are differing sizes of particles in them. Some of them can kind of apply more as a shimmer shade and less as a full chunky glitter, but Cleona was correct when they were saying stuff along the lines of, you guys don't need all of these. You need to pick one or two that are your favorite. You don't need the full collection. Um, oh. As you can see, there are similar shades in here. There's a lot of pink double ups. Um, some of the blues kind of double up. You you really don't need all of them. They were accurate on that. I'll swatch some of the hybrids, even though I haven't really worn them a lot. Uh, I don't think you inherently need a glitter primer for them or for any of them. They all apply pretty opaquely. If you want to deal with some of them crease a little bit, because I have hooded eyes in the crease. Let's get these three. Uh, I would assume, like everything else, they have a bit of that darker base, but not really as strongly as the jeweled multichromes have. They're more sheer, they're something you could layer on and not have such a strong edge to, and not need to be in as smoky of a look, but like most things, I think this is going to apply best with a finger, but I haven't really worn these a ton to do the best wear tests on them. I think, I think it's really personal preference as to the level of glitter, like you saw they are smoother, they are not as chunky as the glitter ones because they're in between, but they are not as impactful as the jeweled multichromes, which are, oh, they're a lot. These are really, really pigmented. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> but you can truly see that, that dark base they have. Um, oh. They're so pretty. <laughs> They're so pretty. <laughs> These are a lot. You are best picking 
some colors that you're comfortable with because if you're not comfortable with purple, if you're not comfortable with green, these two are not gonna be good for you. They're not a, a way to dip your toe into that color. Um, but it's not this one, it's, maybe it is this one. Uh, Anil's one of the ones I have worn. It does that iridescent beetle wing look that I like and I've tried with various different shimmers and applications to try and get, but these have a lot of pigment. I have been using them, I've used them a couple times for full day wear and I did find some creasing in the crease because I have hooded eyes. I have not tested my finger application theory yet because that is something I mainly did on the glitters. I feel like something about the heat and the oils on your fingers and the some magical chemistry thing for me means that when I apply them with a finger, I don't have as much creasing. I have not fully tested that with these, but I would assume it would be along the same lines. Um, I've worn these on their own over my regular primer, which is Smashbox, and I have also worn one of them over a cream shadow. I had the same creasing in the crease complication with both of them, so my next step, once I start playing with them more and getting my favorite applications, I'm going to try and use my finger. I'm going to do some type of crease that is a little bit more blown out, gives me a little bit more room because I got big old fingers for the size of my eyelid, and I'm going to try them with a finger because that has been my favorite usage with the glitters. I'm going to try it with that. I have not had that issue with Davina. Davina's are not as... Let me just see which one is a good one. Davina's are lighter and less intense, but they are still very pretty. So let's just do a couple. I've not been telling you names, and that's fine, because you're, you're going to get better ideas of the color shifts on the website. They all have much better much better representation on their website. So the Davina ones are pretty, but they lean a little bit more towards duochrome than full like aggressive multichrome, just because it is, it is softer pigmentation, it doesn't have that black base. If you want to inch in and ease in and you're not good with glitter, Davina is going to be a more approachable color, a more buildable and forgiving formula to work with. I did not have much creasing issues with these. They applied over, again, I would most likely either use, uh, I have a brown cream shadow that is very easy for these. You pack it all over the lid, you blend out the crease, and then you pack this on top, and you've got a nice, quick, unique, but not complicated look. I believe I've also worn these with like a regular crease and just padded them over my shadow using a brush. I don't remember having any issues with, with uh, creasing or fading with these, but as you can see, they are softer and lighter. So it's like a an easing in to duochromes. So that is my current opinions on my Prests. We'll close that up so that I don't break anything because I just, I get very nervous touching them and moving them because I have gouged chunks out of them. I am not a graceful, delicate person. Uh, for these, I like them. I really think I need to play more because a lot of it was that I picked up uh, Fantastical, which is a really strong one. It's a darker one of the three and it's harder to use. It really is because having to blend out that and these do, at least this one, has a bit of a black base to it, which makes that edge where you're trying to blend it out a little harder to work with because I'm not normally blending it out into something as dark as the black base. Um, but I did really like it as liner. I think I'm just not super comfortable with loose shadows. I just don't use them as much. I didn't really get the hang of them. I have a couple, but they're not my go-to formula. That's probably why I have so many more pressed ones because I like pressed shadows. I know how to approach pressed shadows. 
there's something about trying to get the right amount without getting fallout and getting it to adhere properly when I don't. Loose shadows are not always as emollient and adherent as press shadows. Often the binders and whatever makes them stick into the pan will make them stick a little bit more to your lids. These I'm probably going to either use sparingly on top of glitter glue, which I do have NYX glitter glue. If you have not used it, it's really good. It's cheap. It does a great job grabbing things. If you don't have a cream base, something like that is going to work really well. Or if you're more comfortable putting down more of the primer you're using, kind of like making a cut crease and then placing it over while it's still wet, you'd probably have good luck. I'm... I'm leaning more towards using these to practice on my winged liner for days that I'm trying to go through really, really matte shadows. I have a ton of matte brown shadows, and I did really like the effect it had when I made a quick little blended out neutral look, and then I put one of these as a liquid liner on top. It was very pretty. It is interesting enough, in my opinion, to tempt me into doing more liner work. It took me a long time. It took me a long fucking time, but currently I have the free time to do that, or if I want to do it on a weekend, or do like a really, really neutral, quick blended out one shadow look for work, and then maybe later in the day put one of these on to make it more interesting for going out. It's a good approach. I just, I'm just not super comfortable with loose shadows, so these were not a great idea for me. I don't know why I bought three of them, thinking it was going to be- well, I know exactly what I thought. I thought that the multi-chrome was going to be enough to tempt me into being better at using loose shadows. Turns out I'd rather just buy pressed. <laughs> so, they're good. If you're better at loose shadows, you're going to have a good time. Um, I do think that these two worked a little better for me because they're not as dark compared to Fantastical, but Fantastical has a really good shift. I bet Fantastical would make like the best multi-chrome liner if I ever commit my time to that again. Because this would be nice definition. Uh, scintillating is very pretty. It's, again, the more way of dipping your toes into it, it's more mid-tone to light as opposed to dark. These are a lot. <laughs> these are a lot. Oh, I should, I should swatch these three for you. Not that anybody asked. I'm gonna do it anyway. But they're very pretty. They're so pretty. And in their defense, um, the sisters do not let out a ton of product. So it's not as overwhelming as some loose shadows. But yeah. They just really don't swatch on bare skin the way you want them to. They don't, like Fantastical kind of gives it a run for its money, but let me, let me do something. Something dangerous and uncalled for. Good thing I got that swatchy thing over here. So, we're going to put a little glitter glue down and just spread it all over the back of my hand. So yeah, it spreads out nice and sheer. Do, do, do. And then I'm just going to pack them into different areas so you can kind of see. See what I'm talking about. The different layers, the different base tones, how these two are a little bit easier to start with. I'm gonna close those up while I still have anything going for me before I just completely damage and throw stuff everywhere. So yeah, the sifters don't allow a ton of product up at a time, which is good. It allows you to kind of build it up slowly. 
I'm just still not very good at it. Now we have the dangerous. These are big, they're chunky, they're kind of hard to apply. Like this is terrifyingly chunky, but it's real, oh God, it's getting everywhere. It's really pretty when you get it down. It is so pretty. It kind of flies everywhere. <laughs> And if you don't have a good sticky base, it's not going to stick. This very much needs a glitter glue or a cream shadow underneath that is still kind of wet in order to grab it. Otherwise, it just goes everywhere. Like, I don't think you can see, but it's kind of bouncing around crazy-like. These are not beginner shadows. <laughs> they require extra work, they require extra technique, and they are still a lot because of how like textured and chunky they are they they do not make a smooth line they do not blend into a shade particularly easily um these are gonna leave a bit of a jagged edge at least every time i've worn them which i've worn control freak but not really wisteria Ooh, what is that pet you there I'm seeing little flakes on <laughs> that have blown off my finger onto my desk because they're big, they're chunky, they're a lot. Very impactful, very pretty. I believe this is a two different sizes. I think this is the mini sample and this is like the actual full jar. Um, there is a difference in volume. This is very cool looking container. I like the clear option. I like the ability to see all the different shifts from the different sides. Uh, but if you were just gonna start it, if you hadn't used something like this before, like me, maybe just order one. <laughs> uh, they don't leave a smooth edge. They are textured. They are very, very pretty. They very much require skills. If you are not comfortable using glitter glue or an extra adhesive base, if you are not comfortable with kind of bright ass colors, like even this one, which is green gold, which I, I classify as more wearable, more approachable, more beginner friendly, it's still, it's a lot. It is strong. It is, it draws attention. And then purple, blue, purple, blue, pink orange, gold, like there's a lot. I am horrible at filming these and showing you the proper angles, but these are not where you would start if you don't have other skills to bring into it. So based on your preference with pressed versus loose, um, depth, base tone, aggressiveness of the shadows, I would suggest different ones for different people. It's just, it really is up to your preference. Do you like a base tone? Do you not like a base tone? Do you like brighter colors? Do you want something that is still kind of in the more neutral family? Are you comfortable using a loose? Do you prefer a pressed? Are you comfortable with the amount of texture in these flaky, aggressive ones? Do you have the glitter glue? Have you used the glitter glue before? Or is it like a new thing for you? It's all up. To you, I think they are all good for different applications and preferences. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize I was going to talk for like half an hour about multicrums. I should have known better. I've met me, and I have so much. So, I really, again, think it's up to you and your preferences. I think the Davinas are good starters if you're not good at loose shadows. I think the Dawn Eyes Cosmetics are good for beginners as well if you're comfortable with loose shadows and depending on what depth of shade you want, go online, see the different swatches, Google, Instagram, find some pictures of the way people are wearing the shadows uh, and test that as to whether or not that's a look, you know, if, if most people are making all over the lid looks and that's not what you want. If most people are making, you know, avant-garde chunky looks out of it and that's not what you want, a lot of that probably has to do with the easiest way to use those shadows. So I would say Davina's a good start. 
Um, I would say the hybrids are a little bit more beginner friendly and approachable than the full on jeweled multichromes because of that black base and because of how pigmented they are. I think you might get a smoother edge blend on the hybrids than the full on jeweled duochromes from Clana. Yeah. And I think, like Clana said when they were talking about these and why they have so many in their thing, you don't need all of them. You need one or two, you need to figure out what your favorite is, and there's so many options here now that it is a little daunting for me to pick what I want to do, just because there's just so many different options. <laughs> um, you don't need all of the brand. I still, the evil little collector in me wants all of it, but I don't. I need to, like most people, go through, see which colors really, really intrigue me, really, really inspire me, and pick those up. I do not need every single one of these flakes because that's too many, and some of them are repeats. You might have one that is, you know, blue, purple, pink versus green, blue, purple, and you don't need both. You really don't, especially because so many of these are going to look different in different lighting. It's going to be very dependent on how you wear them, what your application style is, and how many different like lighting angles you're going to look in it. Because some of these I wore to work and they looked the same the entire day because I was in an office versus going one and wearing it out with like a friend when we were going in between like outside light in stores and other places and they were able to see and appreciate the different color shifts, but that's not going to be everybody. and. Do you really want to do full-on one shadow looks all the time or do you want something a little bit more muted you can tie into stuff something that you can pack on the front end or the back end it is also a little bit more complicated on how you're gonna work them into looks because you don't always know which part of the color shift is going to sit on which part of your eye and I've had that in that sometimes I would you know I would hope and assume that of the different color shifts the lighter part would sit on the inner part of my eye like I want it to. That's not always the case. Sometimes you get like the lighter part on the out and it looks kind of wonky, at least on me in my opinion, because I'm used to a certain way I build my eyeshadows. It doesn't always sit the way you're expecting. So start with a couple, figure out your favorite color shifts, and take it slow. These are expensive. <laughs> they are not, for most people, an everyday thing. And you don't need all of them. So, I think I'm done repeating myself over again. Ah, and I have chunks to find because they flew all over my room. Uh, hopefully this is helpful in knowing what I have. Uh, I will have some of these on Instagram. Uh, I don't really know. Normally they're tagged with the brand and the name and hashtags. Um, if we end up doing something else and I stop filming looks every day, I might do like a week of doing the jeweled or a week of doing Davina or something like that. Again, since I don't have a good editing system, I can't really do those videos on this platform right now. But if you have a specific one, if you want to see a specific color shift, you know, in a look, which honestly I'm not doing anything very interesting with them, I'm just doing them all over the lid, if you want to see one. Let me know, and maybe I'll do it over the next week or so. Uh, if you have a plan for how I could use these chunky textured ones without just patting it all over the lid and help me out, I don't really... Like, they're gorgeous. I just don't have as many ideas of how to work them into looks. Yeah, maybe that'll be tomorrow. Maybe I'll try and figure out how to do one of the lighter glitter multichromes into a structured look. I don't know. I'm, I'm winging it still very amateur makeup person Just spending a lot of money because multi-chromes are expensive mainly because multi-chrome pigments are expensive to acquire for the brand and put them into shadows it's true it is the way of the world but yeah thank you guys for watching and dealing with my rambling and repeating and my bad swatches i will see you guys next time bye